Uh, yeah. Thanks, everybody. Okay, so let, let's keep ourselves muted. I'm going to get started so we have time for everything. Um, and Lori will keep an eye on the chat. If you have a question at any time, just type it into the chat. Um, okay, I'm going to tell you a little bit about me and my upcoming Flexible Book Structures class, and then we'll make the books rock card. And by the way, we're talking about artist books today. So I've, if you haven't heard this, if you're just joining, you can type in what is an artist book into the chat, what it means to you. And there's no right or wrong answer. Um, uh, after we make the card, I'll answer any questions. And at the end, I'd love to take a few screenshots with us all holding up our card. So if you wanna come on video at the end, we'll do that. And we'll have a wide variety, I'm sure. Um, you can also share what you create on Instagram. And if you tag me, uh, hashtag Helen Hebert, I will share what you tag. So thank you, or what you post. And again, um, while I'm talking now a little bit about the class, uh, you're welcome to type any questions into the chat. So let me uh, share my screen. Okay. Okay. And you can see that, right, Lori? Yes. Okay. And just a quick, if you've just joined us and your name says Lori Moorhead, that's fine. We had some technical issues and uh, don't worry about it. You can rename yourself if you know how, but don't worry about it. Okay. So I first worked with paper in a class during a junior year abroad program in college back in the late 1980s. And I moved to New York City after I graduated. A brief trip to Japan a year or so later reignited my interest in paper, and I decided that I was going to learn how to make it by hand, thinking that I had to do that in Japan. Little did I know that there was a professional papermaking studio called Judone Paper Mill right in New York City, and I ended up working there for six years. And while at the mill, I fell into writing how-to books. That's another story. But I ended up really loving that, sort of uh, figuring out how to write instructions and tell how things are made. And I started out writing books about hand paper making. And I always enjoy featuring the work of other artists in my books and seeing how my books are used. Okay, hang on my, shoot. My scrolling isn't working. Okay, what should I do? Uh, try the arrow buttons. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. Um, All right, I'm gonna escape out. Okay. Uh-oh. That's not working either. Ah. Want me to stop? Okay, wait. Here? Okay, oh. somehow. All right. Ah. Okay, here's an example of uh, me loving people, seeing people using my books. This is two women in the North Sea in England referring to my book, The Papermaker's Companion, while they're making a sheet of paper. I love that. And if you have pictures of you using my books, I'd love to see them. Um, I've written a couple of books related to paper craft. I love exploring the potential of paper, especially how paper can be transformed from two into three dimensions. And I'm excited to share the cover of my next book, The Art of Papercraft, which will come out next February. And this will feature 40 projects that can be created from a single sheet of paper, more or less. Uh, I just wanted you to know that I write a weekly blog called The Sunday Paper. I know a lot of you follow it already. Uh, it's free and it highlight, highlights interesting paper facts from across the globe each and every Sunday. I also host a podcast where I interview paper professionals. It's called Paper Talk, and a new episode comes out every three weeks. And I run a membership program called The Paper Year, where we explore a different technique and a project utilizing paper every month. This is my studio in Red Cliff, Colorado, just uh, down the street from Vail. And uh, now I'm going to talk about books. 
So this is an artist book that I made called 50 Revolutions. Some of you may have contributed a word about motherhood or your mother um, that is written on the green uh, piece called Mapping Motherhood here. Um, I, I enjoy making artist books often with my own handmade paper. This book was inspired by the sculpture Mother Tree, which you see in the upper right hand corner. And I'm showing you this because Mother Tree has been in storage for 10 years, but she's going on view at a really cool place called the Museum of Motherhood in St. Petersburg, Florida uh, later this month. So I'm excited she's come out of storage. And now just a little bit about the flexible book structures online class. Um, there is a link with more information uh, in the chat and I'll be sending a follow up email to everyone with the recording too. Um, there's a video trailer about this class, but just in a nutshell, this is a six week online class and we'll do a different project each week. Every Monday, um, new instructions will be posted in the classroom. This is hosted on Rizuku, which is a fairly user-friendly, not all of my students would agree with me, but I think it's a pretty user-friendly platform. Um, and you'll receive uh, downloadable PDF instructions, as well as a video. The videos range from 15 to 30 minutes in length. And then we have an online classroom where um, we share what we're creating, ask questions, get feedback. And um, that's really a fun part of the class, I find. Although you can take, you can sign up for the class and just um, do these projects whenever you can because you have life, lifetime access. So just quickly running through the types of projects we'll be doing. Um, we'll start out taking strips of paper that can be just what you might think of as a strip or a shaped strip and putting them together in different ways. You can add content and imagery if you like, or just explore the structure. And then this is a structure I developed called the crisscross accordion. Um, I developed it when I was creating my book vertices, which you see at the bottom. Uh, I, I love envelopes. If you've taken other classes with me, you probably know that. Um, there are ways to transform them, uh, let light come through them, slip papers inside. And uh, this is why I call this a flexible book structure because the same structure could be a book, a screen, or a lantern, depending on how you fold it. It could even hang, you know, hang vertically or horizontally on the wall. Uh, here's a book that a student made using that envelope structure, but she did a completely different uh, rendition, which I love. I love uh, people thinking outside of the box and taking my projects in different ways. Inflatables, um, these are fascinating to me because you can work on the panels while they're flat and then put them together, inflate them with air, and they, be they become dimensional. And they're constructed in a uh, surprising way. It's, it's uh, not tricky. It's, it's done flat, really. And then the inflation makes them become dimensional. And then we'll do a little bit of paper weaving, uh, creating this uh, woven paper notebook with the same structure, uh, just without pages bound in, can be transformed into a lantern or a window or wall hanging. And I do have a supply kit and I'd like to request that if you're going to take the class and would like the supply kit that you register by next Monday so that I can get those orders filled and to you before class begins on September 20th. Um, and the supplies are fairly basic. There's a link to what you need um, in the, on the sales page on my website. And so you can preview what you'll need and decide whether you want the kit or not. Okay, that uh, is this one. Helen, can you mail to Canada? Yes, I would order soon. I'm sending the international orders out ahead of time because um, you never know how long it takes. But yes, I order. My shopping cart is set up for that. You can just place your order. Okay. Okay, so um, you're welcome to type questions in at any time. 
Lori will be monitoring that and I will now let's make a book that rocks. Um, so you can spotlight my hands. Yeah. And if um, you can keep adding in the chat. So some people may have joined us. Uh, uh, you might be named Lori Moorhead. If you know how to change your name, that's fine. We had a technical glitch. Don't worry if you don't know how to rename yourself. You can just be Lori today. And Lori Moorhead, the real Lori Moorhead is assisting me on tech. So this is the little uh, demo piece that you've seen picture of and see how it rocks. Um, and uh, yeah, type into the chat if you have a question at any time. So the link for this template is in there too, if you didn't get it for some reason. And by the way, when you sign up for a Zoom session with me, um, the reply that you get, sometimes we don't read those replies, but that's where uh, in the confirmation, you receive the link to my template. So just be aware of that in the future, if you didn't know that. Um, and I wanted to point out, just so I don't forget, here's the original version of this that I designed many years ago. I, I made some of these to take to a Codex book fair, uh, maybe in 2011 or 13. And this, when you fold it, like this, I'll try to remember to show you again. It fits into a square five inch envelope. So you could mail it to someone and then they can assemble it. Um, just FYI. And square envelopes require extra postage. If you didn't know that, they don't go through the machine the same as regular envelopes. Okay. So I did recommend that you cut out your template pieces. So I've already cut mine out. Um, and I printed mine just on a plain white 65 pound index weight cardstock. Um, but you could print this on any paper. And I look forward to seeing at the end, we'll all share what we make. And then I already cut out my little book from another template. So the first thing we wanna do after you have your pieces cut out is cut along these solid lines, this little book shape. So um, I'm gonna use a ruler for the straight lines and then I'll just wing it for the curved lines. You wanna make sure you cut right up to that dashed lines cause it'll fold better if you do that. Okay, so I'm just releasing this top part of my book. I'm gonna say an artist book is magic. Artist books are art in book form. Okay, Janet signed up via mobile but didn't receive a confirmation email. Huh, but you got it when you signed up via your browser. That's something new. Learn something new every day. Um, by the way, the confirmation, I couldn't send the confirmation email out through Zoom. It wouldn't let me. It told me that option wasn't available. So that's why I sent you something else. But I'd be curious if anyone knows whether they did receive my confirmation through Zoom um, because uh, I thought I sent it to several, but then it just stopped working. So you could put that in the chat if you want. Okay, so now that I have that cut, I'm going to score three places. And I don't see my bone folder here, but I have a micro spatula, I'm gonna use that. So I'm gonna score along the dotted lines. So this has several lines because it's talking about the tape and the X's, but there is a dotted line here. So score that. Ooh, my nose way off. And then here, be careful here. Um, you don't want to score across the book. 
it's actually will be covered, so it doesn't matter, but structurally it's better if you don't score it. You don't wanna accidentally collapse it there or fold it. So I'm just scoring where the dotted lines are. So on either side of this book shape. And then I've got one more down here, all the way across. Okay, you don't need to fold yet. Let's get our other, our, our little book pages. So let me show you a couple. Now I told you four or five sheets, but it, this really depends how thick your paper is. You could just do one or two or three or four or five. So this one, you see my pages, I have one, two, three. I actually used the printed one although I printed it on a Japanese Kozo paper. So this one has three pages. And then this one, if you want to get creative, you can do it today if you're comfortable or later on with another one. I staggered the size. So you can see I used the actual printout just on regular paper. And then I have a flax and a persimmon coated paper and a walnut dyed for the pages of my book. And um, this one, because it got bigger, it's actually a little bit larger. Um, so this piece here is meant to hold your book just to keep it, well, and we're gonna stitch to it. So this is kind of our base, um, but I'm just showing you that you can go bigger if you want. It all depends what you're gonna do with this. If you wanna fold this down and put it in an envelope, like I said with this one, uh, you don't want your book to get too much bigger, but it can, it can creep towards the edges and sides. Okay, so now we wanna cut out our papers. I've got, um, I've got three, three different sheets here that are just a little bit larger. Their uh, text weight, maybe a little heavier. They're a little bit larger than my template. Um, I'm not gonna be able to see on that green. I'm gonna trace the outline. So I'm gonna be careful that I've got this placed where I know it will um, fit my smallest sheet. And I'm going to trace it. And then I'm gonna cut through all three layers, but you could just cut one at a time. You could just use the template piece for your actual book as well. So here I go cutting. I've got a nice sharp blade. It felt like it went through everything. It did. Okay, so I've got my three pages. Um, I'll give you a, mo a minute to catch me. Okay, good to know some people did. Yeah, quite a bit you did. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I got through about, I don't remember, about half. You have to do it in pages. It's really weird in Zoom um, through groups of 18. Well, while we're waiting, I'm just going to reiterate to anybody who wants to change their name, um, find it finds your the screen that hopefully has your face on it. If it just says Lori Moorhead, you'll want to turn your video on so that you can see your face. Hover your mouse over that screen. There should be three dots in the upper right corner. Click on those. In the drop down menu, should be an option to rename. And I don't know how you do it on an iPad. I'm sorry. 
and it's fine if you're not renamed yeah. so don't worry about it but it's nice to know who's here. yes absolutely absolutely and thanks everybody who did show up yeah it looks um, like okay go ahead now i was just gonna say um you need a needle and thread if you have an all it will come in handy i always leave something off the supply list okay that's what i left off but i'll show you how to do what we're going to do with a needle as well um so what kind of uh can you give me a just wave at me if you're done let me see how many people are ready to move on maybe uh can you if they do a hands up thing reaction or you do a reaction to yeah we'll, I'll see up or something like that so in the bottom right of your screen it says uh, reactions and you can do a thumbs up or a clap okay all right i'm going to give you another minute Um, if you're done, what uh, did anyone print their template on a to a different kind of paper? What kind? You know, I'm just using white cardstock, but I'd love to know. Okay. Nobody's responding. That's okay. Well, oh, <laughs> linen cardstock. Yeah, awesome. I, I use Stratmore four hundred. Okay, purple cardstock. Great. Yeah, you can get. I mean, a lot of variety. Uh, I use red cardstock. Uh huh. Uh huh. Did anybody try to print onto some unusual paper that you uh, might not normally run through your printer? <laughs> I see someone said gel gel prints gel prints oh awesome good okay yeah laurel says she was afraid to mess up the printer that's a valid concern um i don't i don't get too ambitious with my papers i've i've tried thin papers and i tape them to a carrier sheet so they run through but i haven't tried textured papers i just i don't want to mess up the printer for everything else i need to do all right so now what we're going to do is um we need to fold our little pages in half so depending on the thickness of your paper you can do that all at once which would be more accurate or you can do it one at a time I don't have a little mark of where the exact center is. So I am just going to take mine and fold them over. It is not going to be exactly perfect, but it's pretty close. I could have put on the template of where to score, but I was trying to keep extra printing out, out of there. So they're all folded. If for some reason yours are really thick, you could fold them one at a time. It folds pretty well in half. There's just uh, one of the sides of the book is a little different than the other. And by the way, these are not, I, they don't match up exactly. I kind of like that. So I intentionally didn't match up uh, the edges of the little books rock template and the outline on the base card. Okay. So, so now you're going to keep those stacked together and um, decide where on that book you can really position this how you want. Um, you can push it up a little over, you can have it down. Um, this is arbitrary. This one is all white, so you can't really see the background, but I tend to bring it down a little bit. And then um, if you have an all, you're going to do three, punch three holes. Uh, I said this before, I forgot to put all. If you don't, you're going to use a needle. Um, I'm just going to show both ways. 
So you're going to want to punch and you can measure if you want to make this exact, but I don't think it has to be exact. So you'll just want to come down about a quarter inch from the top, which is about a half centimeter, quarter inch from the up from the bottom and then in the middle. So I happen to have put centimeters on here. I know we have some people that use centimeters. So two centimeters is the middle and then a half from either end. But again, uh, you don't have to measure that. And so I would poke a hole. So I'm gonna do one with the all through my center line, all the way through all the papers. That's the most accurate. Um, that's really hard to do just with a needle. Let me try it and see if I can do it in my papers. This will depend on your paper. Oh, actually it wasn't that hard. Um, what I was going to suggest if it is difficult is to punch through one and then use that as a template for the next one. So then I, I'm just punching through one at a time. I need to get my third hole here. And then I'll take my third, line those up, punch through, and then I'll set it on here. Now I already had punched, so I need to line that up. But if you're just using a needle, theoretically you wouldn't have. So you'll punch, we're gonna stitch this into the back. You're gonna keep those lined up. If you have a little piece of tape and wanna tape those, I'm gonna be adventurous here. And then you'll need your needle and thread next. And um, you don't need to have a knot. I am using embroidery thread. Uh, I have got two two strands, but you could use six strands, you, which is the normal embroidery floss. You could use uh, linen book binding thread. Sewing machine thread is a little thin. Um, you could use other strings. Your hole might need to be a little bigger to accommodate that. So I'll let you get your String ready. Let me know if you have any questions in the chat. Okay, someone says a push pin makes a quickie all. Great idea, Ann Lou. Thank you. Sonia's printer broke, huh? Okay, Lynn, this looks interesting. She's using eco printed yardstick. Instead of running it through the printer, she printed the template on regular copy paper and put that on top of the paper to show where to cut and score. That's a great idea. Yeah, you can use a template to, as your guide. Uh, sometimes I actually print the template on a thin paper and then cut through it into the other paper. I, I suspect that yardstick is actually cardstock. I know the name of cardstock. Mm -hmm. Is that a specific thing? Because because Word don't always always autocorrects cardstock to yardstick. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was reading what it said. So probably yeah. cardstock. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you for clarifying. It's a common autocorrect. Yeah. Oh, yardstick. What? Yes, yardstick was autocorrect. Yeah. <laughs> It, I don't know why it thinks yardstick, and, but anyway, it's happened. Right. I've seen it many times. Okay, so the next thing, I'm presuming you have your needle and thread. Um, you can decide. Um, you'll see in my sample, I tied that on the back. So I have a little knot on the back. Uh, but you could have that on the front. It could be a little decorative element. You can tie a little bow. You can finish off your knot any way you want. So that's a decision you have to make. I like mine on the back. 
So I am going to start on the back and we're just doing a three hole pamphlet stitch. So we're gonna start, you can see my holes are not gonna line up exactly. I've got a couple here in the center. And if you need to look to see where your hole is in the other pieces, that's fine. Let me, when I have them lined up, I'm gonna just go back in and, okay, that hole is through all of them. So now if I flip this, it should go. It wasn't wanting to go through all three. So I'm gonna go in the center hole. of all of the paper. And now that's gonna help hold everything in place. I'm gonna pull that through, not all the way. And I didn't tell you, nobody asked how long the thread should be. Like a foot, you really only need three times the length of uh, the height of your book. So not even maybe six inches, but it's nice to have a little extra. So I have about a foot. And I'm gonna leave a tail so I can tie a knot about two inches, two or three inches. And then I'm gonna go into either one of the other holes. It doesn't matter. Just one of the other ones, the top or the bottom one. Pull that all the way through. Be careful you don't pull out that back tail. Make sure that's still there but you wanna have it pulled all the way so you don't have any extra string. And then we're gonna go, um, I'm gonna flip it back over to the back so you can see. So there's my, the hole I went in the center. I came back out through the top. Now I'm gonna go in through the bottom. And I'm gonna to have to look to find my hole. There it is. So if you went in the bottom, you'll just come out the top. So you're just coming through the other one. Hold that tail and pull everything tight. Flip it back over. And now I wanna make sure everything's snug. I don't have any loose areas. I'm going to hold my tail. I'm going to go back in the center. Now, when you do this, um, you want to look and see where your needle came out. You want to have it, see how this string is to the left of this center string. I want this one to the right. So these two strings are on opposite sides of that center string uh, so that when I tie my knot, it's going around that string. Okay, does that make sense? So if you've got them both on one side, just take your needle and move it to the other side. So I just wanna double check again that my strings are flat. I don't have any extra loops of thread there. Now I'm gonna trim and just to match up these two. So they're two or three inches. And I'm going to tie a knot around that center string. I'm gonna tie a double knot, or as I said, if you had it on the front and you had a fun string, you could tie a bow. I'll just tie a bow for fun here. This won't show at all because it's the back. But you can tie a bow and then adjust, you know, how long you want your little. So that might look cute in the center on the other side, but I'm going to pull it out and just tie a double knot. And then you'll want to trim, but you want to leave about a quarter inch. Um, if you trim too close to the knot, it could accidentally untie. So you don't want to do that. Okay. Now don't assemble your card yet. We're going to put our double-sided tape on next. I'm just going to give people a couple of minutes 
to get caught up. So you can use half inch double sided tape. Mine's a little skinnier, maybe three eighths, or you can use glue. Um, what adhesives are people going to use? Type it in the chat. Um, I'm gonna read a couple more definitions of an artist book. An artist book is an artificial expression where content and form correspond. Thank you, Louise. A structure that stretches the boundaries of bookness. Yes. Okay, double-sided tape seems popular. Glue, all right, Diane, yay. <laughs> And we're doing really well on time. So we'll have plenty of time if you have any questions, got stuck anywhere. All right, so I'm just gonna put a piece of tape where it says apply double-sided tape here. This is, uh, I, I think Daiso, if you live anywhere near, um, well, San Francisco, I don't know where else there would be a Daiso. It's a Japanese, like uh, kind of like Walmart. San Diego has quite a few. Okay. Um, they sell the double-sided tape in these little dispensers that are really cool. And they they come in different widths. This one's 10 millimeters, but I think they come a little skinnier and a little wider. So I'm going to just stretch this the whole length here. And then I'll trim the end. It actually has a thing where you can rip off the end, but I want to get right to the edge. So I'm going to use my scissors. And if you're a calligrapher or have nice handwriting, I mean, obviously you could write anything or collage, you know, you could do anything onto your book pages here or write books rock yourself. All right, so now I'm ready to fold. And I'm just gonna fold along all the lines that I scored. And they're all folding um, as a mountain. So if you didn't score them, I recommend doing that now. So they all fold in the same direction, away from the printing. So I've got this. And there's a little, you know, print, print out of what this ends up looking like on the back. So you'll remove your tape. And then carefully line this up. Um, it doesn't have to rock yet. So I like to set my edge down and then match up my corners. The one thing about double-sided tape is it's not easy to move. Um, uh, Glue is a little easier. I was off a hair, so I'm a little bit, oh, I don't like that. Oh, well. Do a little trim here to try to fudge. Okay, now this doesn't automatically turn into a rocking mechanism. You have to kind of press it, you know, don't fold it, but just uh, squeeze it to get that rocking angle. This also would sit flat if you didn't do that. So, which is another way to display it. But as soon as you start curving it, it has a little curve. And there's your book that rocks. Um, Lori's saying you can also get an easy to tear double-sided tape from score tape online. Oh, so you mean you can just tear it, like rip it? Yeah. It's hard to do. Yeah. Yes. It'll tear with your fingernail. Um, okay. uh, and it, it, I get it in, it's big rolls. Um, 
I've, I've gone through like three packs of one eighth, one quarter and half inch during uh, the pandemic. <laughs> yeah, wow. I use it a lot. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's really great. Well, that's handy to know because I, um, yeah, sometimes you just want to rip it, but it doesn't often. Yeah. Yeah, it's really easy to just put it down and just rip it right there so you can put a little little piece wherever you want it. Cool. All right. Well, we've got plenty of time, so um, feel free to ask questions. I'll give you another three or four minutes to finish up before we start showing what we've got. And um, you can even unmute yourself and talk if you want. Not everybody, but if you have a question or something to say. Uh, somebody gave me the instructions to change your name on an iPad. Oh, OK. So, um, for anyone who wants to know, uh, you if you're on an iPad, go under participants. Your you yourself should be at the top. Click there. I, I'm assuming like on the three dots or something like that. And you can change your name there. Okay, Mindy's asking, how does it flatten to mail? And um, you have to mail it unassembled, Mindy. The person who receives it has to assemble it, unless you have some kind of magical adhesive that you can, you know, put on and take off. Um, no, so yeah, you can't flatten this once it's assembled. Um, I do have. I have this version I'll, I'll send with the replay where it actually has assembly instructions. So it just tells the person that gets it, remove the backing material from the tape and attach it to the tab, squeeze the bottom edges of the triangle together to make the paper curve. Now your book rocks. So that's how I originally designed it. I didn't want you to have the instructions before though, because you could have just made it without me. So, um, but I'll share that file with you if you'd like to make more of these and send them to people so you don't have to i've already written the instructions you don't need to do it again so let's just do an informal if you've got yours done hold it up shall i uh stop spotlighting oh yeah I, yeah i don't need to be spotlit anymore okay um Sweet Barb, I see you staggered your pages. Nice. Oh, look what it, Joanna I, has a lot of pages. Evie Binsinger's got something amazing that, oh, I think it might be, a, never mind. I think it's her. something else. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, we've got a lot. Yeah. The Jean Viave, yours is cute. Oh, I love how you have all your pages fluttered and the, Okay, of course it moves. Who's showing on my screen? Someone wrote books rock in a really clever way vertically with the two O's next to each other. Sweet. Look at that fun paper, Beth. You used an embossed paper. So you guys should all be, so hold them up and then everybody scroll Sorry. through. You have six screens of people okay. so scroll through and take a look okay everyone without video is at the the last pages if you want to turn your video on now we welcome you oh that's beautiful diane wrote celebrate at the bottom that's nice you can add text anywhere and i always like to do you know all of the text and everything before it's finally assembled so the assembly is the last thing Beautiful. Um, are you taking pictures, Lori? I did, um, but I can do another batch if people want to. Everybody on unison, hold it up for a couple of minutes because I have to go through three screens. So if everybody can hold theirs up. So fun. Think yeah, and then I get to the non-screens. Yeah, yeah, I got a bunch. How many um, pages? Let's see who broke the limit. How many pages did you all put in yours? Three, five, three, four, 
Awesome. I think, uh, yeah, we see three to five. That's what I said. If you used a really thin paper, you could probably, I would say 20 if it was a really thin, but if you wanted to put your novel in this form. Mm -hmm. um, let's do a few because it's, uh, we have some time. Let's uh, do some where if you wanna share, uh, what's the best way to do it, Lori? So we uh, can they, spotlight people. If someone um, uh, wants to share and, and then they unmute themselves, that makes them come up to the top of the, my participant list. Um, or put your hand up kind of thing at, on using reactions, something like that. Beth, do you wanna share yours? Yeah. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Okay. There's Beth. <laughs> um, I did this beautiful paper in the inside and done just a thin accent and then this embossed. And then I, I just used the same color ink to do the, the books rock part. Yeah. And I like how you cut out the books rock. That's neat. Yay. Yeah. I wanted it to not, I didn't, cause I print on, you know, yeah, copy right. paper. That's ugly. So I yeah. wanted to show the other beautiful cup papers. So yeah, that was oh, just nice. what was handy in my scrap thing. So thank you, Helen. Um, this is Linda Tanaka. My computer totally closed off when you put the tape uh, to make it rock. Uh, could you just do that again? Because now I'm on my phone. Oh sure. Okay. Um, Lori, can you spotlight my, there. Um, let me just, okay, here we go. I've got an extra, yay. So you just put tape uh, okay, right that. where it says, okay, let me, let me stick a piece. Sorry about this, but something <laughs> ugly happened. No, here. that's all right. So we've been dealing with that all day. All right, so you take that off and then um, you're going to attach it over here, so to the back side of the opposite edge. And I like to, let's see, I'm going to do it a little. If I hold it this way, I can get those two corners exact. My tape is really strong, so I cannot, I can't uh, move it once it's down. Okay, so that's taped. And then you have to kind of squeeze this a little bit to make okay. it uh, rock because it could also just be flat. But as soon as you squeeze it, it wants to rock. Okay. Thank you so much. Like yeah. That. Okay, bye, Louisa. Um, anybody else want to share theirs up close? I'd like to show mine, Linda. Okay. Tanaka. I used a kind of a scrapbooking uh, paper. Oh, yeah. And everything's kind of stiff, true enough, but I love how it looks. And I'm going to tape in some um, filmy paper with some words on it. And that, those, that filmy paper will be on each flap. Beautiful. Oh, yeah. I like it with all the same paper, too. It looks really yeah. cohesive. Thank you. It looks like a butterfly. It is. It's a a butterfly book. And by the way, you could change yeah. the shape. It doesn't have to be a book. So this, it could be a butterfly. It could be a heart. You know, you right. can take this design and turn it into something else. Right. If you, you do that, send me a picture. Okay. Yay. Thank you. Who else? Uh, I'm Maggie. Okay. I can share mine. Great. Oh, beautiful. So it's a little bit bigger. You can see in the back. Uh huh. And I actually didn't. This is Tiziano, which is kind of like a cardstock. Right. I didn't print on that. I just kind of cut this out and, and used it on as a it. template. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. There's lots of ways to use templates, and I just send the printed one so it's easy. But yeah, right. you don't want all those markings on your actual thing so great thank you um helen there's a, a great tip in the chat uh beth says with a strong double-sided tape i run a swish of glue stick over the top and it gives you a second to position oh okay that, 
brilliant. So it gives it a slipperiness. Neat. Nice. Love that. Thank you, Beth. Uh, Marilyn, did you want to share? Sure, sure thing. Hi, um, I'm a huge fan. I love your blog and I love oh, your book. Thank you. Greetings from Canada. So hi, hi. there. <laughs> So um, I actually have some paper left over from a previous course I took with you. So uh, that's the little black paper there. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Fun. Yeah. Great to see you. And I love Great the, to see you. The I'd love to come and visit you in person one day. One day I will. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> You're welcome. Everybody's welcome. I don't get many visitors except when I have a <laughs> class. <laughs> so, yeah. It's a beautiful place here. Uh, All right. I, this is Molly. I have something, an idea that's, that kind of works. Yeah. I put a little tab. Oh, so you don't have to assemble it, a different assembly. Right, and then it, it, it tucks into the a little slot right ah, here. Oh, clever. It doesn't work great, but it that way you can disassemble it. Well, anyway. Oh, great idea. And I bet someone can engineer that to make it Perfect. Maybe you with a little more time. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Hi, Helen. Hi. This, is Luana. this okay. is Luana Rich. Oh, hey, Luana. I didn't, I, I ran out of time to download the template. So I was trying to engineer as, as you went along. Uh -huh. And this is what I came up with. It's a little wonky as far as where the cuts were. But um, I'm 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 interested in um, a, Forrest has joined me. Um, <laughs> I'm interested in how you determined was it trial and error in determining how far up the book you should uh, do the cut for the relief, um, and and what's or is there a ratio or something you know because i can see that that would be if you're going to change the shape to like an apple or a butterfly or something that you would um need to to look at that maybe maybe is it trial and error to get it to balance correct yeah it was trial and error i do not recall having any sort of system i mean obviously well, you can't see this. You wouldn't want, um, you can't cut beyond this panel, but you could, you could experiment with the sort of triangle you have here and see if you could change the ratios. Um, I started playing with it a little bit to see if I could change the size in preparation for this demo. And then I just went back to what I had originally designed. <laughs> Often it's like more of a headache to try to, to change it up but yeah i invite you to um and yeah i don't have a great answer for for how to explore further but thank you um does anybody have any other questions we can have a few more show and tell oh mary's going to use her this for her christmas card structure woohoo this is joanna um, Joanna, yeah. this with red cardstock, and this is just old stationary paper, like 20, uh, 20 pound Strathmore. Oh, yeah. But I, I'm going to add more pages and make butterfly structure. I think it'll make a great gift for somebody. Yeah, hold it up a little higher so we can see it. There you go. Nice. I'm going to take a picture real quick. Thank you. And I'm going to be in your um, flexible course, so I'm looking forward to it. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I see several of you here. Thanks to those of you who've already signed up. So I have I have something to, sh I was playing with shadows a little bit. I'm gonna just show what I put on my phone because I started shading on the oh, yeah. green tape. Oh. And then I started playing with the light. So I was playing with shadows and just ah. like broke and it was kind of fun. Wait, so the shadow underneath? So there's a shadow that I drew on the green on the, like the horizon uh -huh. and then I, and then I took and I put it under light and I started seeing the other shadows and I said right. oh, it's kind of fun to play with. Right. Absolutely. Cool. Thank you. Uh, 
couple more. Anybody else want to share? I'll, I'll share. Okay. Uh, my name is Sally Sawyer. Oh, and... sorry. Sorry. Hold on. Uh, get the wrong person I... spotlighted. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, are you another Lori Moorhead? I am. Okay. <laughs> yeah, there we go. There we go. Um, I like having the knot in the front. Yeah. So on purpose, oh. you know, the back is, but I liked putting the knot in the front. And then I had, this is a washer that was old and rusty yeah. and I wanted to tie it on. Um, I need a different way of tying it on. But the other thing is it made it so heavy that it, it, oh, it does, it, it pulls it, it all right, falls yeah. down. But I used pages from a recipe book to oh, put in. Nice. That's yep. a great idea. Love Thanks. It. Thank you. I'll show mine. Okay. Hi. Um, Hi. Lynn. Beautiful. I just like playing with different papers. So I use eco printed paper and paste paper and yeah just like combining them mm -hmm. wonderful and then it, we were supposed to fold here or not yeah okay okay so if you hold it sideways it you got the rocking yeah that's right yep okay great thank you wonderful uh jo joanna did you want to share i i did i had the red one. Oh, you already did okay yeah, yeah. okay that's fine um and Kevin, yes, I'd like to share mine. Oh, hi, yeah. Anne. Hi. Um, I was able, I was able to find a nice use for this. Is it mo momigami? Yeah. That we made um, that's double sided. It, it was tissue paper double sided. So it hold it up. We can't interest. see it. Okay. And hold it still. For some reason, you have weird lighting. Nice. Oh, yeah. So it adds a little dimension and helps the book hold open. Right, right. So I'm giving this to my librarian friends. Oh, yeah. Perfect for librarians. Yay. Fun to be here. Yeah, good. All right. Well, we did it, folks. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, if uh, there are any last questions, let me know. There's um, a a great little comment that these would make great place cards for table seatings at, yes. at a wedding or dinner party. I think that's a wonderful. Oh idea. yeah. That's a great idea. Yeah. yeah. Um, I will send you the recording. So you'll get that later today or um, tomorrow early. And I hope to see some of you in class and I know I will see others of you. Have a great rest of your day. <laughs>